So this is the handover for the Autosleeper Warwick XL. We'll begin straight at the back of the vehicle with your fresh water inlet. Use the small key provided, key into this lock, twist, and release your cap, and then hose pipe in. There's an alternative filling mechanism, which we'll talk about later on, on the other side. Down below the skirt, you've got your gray water drain. That allows you to drain off the water from the shower tray, the vanity unit, and the kitchen sink. And then you have ventilation for the fridge, just that. On the back three quarter panel, your external gas barbecue point, unclip the fitting that's provided, attach that onto your rubber hose for your gas barbecue, and then you can connect up and use the gas supply from the onboard tank. So high up above the rear view brake light, you've got your reversing camera, down under the skirt is the access for your spare wheel. There's a tool kit underneath the passenger seat, uh, which has got all the equipment that you would require. When you open up the back of the vehicle and tip up the bed cushion, you'll be able to see the whale water heater. Specifically for winter storage, underneath this white poster cap, there's a yellow lever there. If that's moved through 90 degrees, that allows you to discharge the content of the water heater and drain it out for winter storage. For use of the water heater on gas, there is a gas tap. So you have an onboard tank, um, you have the ability to isolate that specific appliance uh, if you had to do so or wish to do so. At the back of the vehicle, just under the skirt, you've got two exhaust vents side by side. The one on the left is the exhaust vent for the blown air heating system, the one on the right for the diesel room heating system. Make sure they're not obscured in any way. You've then got an alternative water filling system. So instead of using the hose pipe on the other side, provided with the van is this attachment, which connects in and then goes on to the other end for a regular tap and then inflates the hose and obviously ultimately fills up the fresh water tank in that way. Under the skirt, you've got the blue tap, which is the drain valve for your fresh water. So you open that up for storage and decontamination. Further along the body of the van, an external port with a 12 volt and coaxial socket for external use. Alongside that, your mains. There's a new mains lead provided with the van. Underneath, you've got your gas control. So there's a cover over the tank, which has to be removed, which then releases or enables you to shut off the gas supply. Standard toilet cassette. Your flush water comes from the onboard fresh water supply. So you only have to worry about emptying the cassette itself. So pull up on the blue lever, slide the cassette body towards you and then an appropriate location, remove the blue cap, tip up the container and discharge the tank. Before you load it back in again, use a base chemical of uh, green or the sachets mixed with some water and then slide it back into the unit. Alongside, you've got your gas point access. So using um, LPG pumped, you can attach onto the bayonet fittings uh, and then fill the onboard tank with gas. So just inside the cab door, you've got your LPG gas indicator. This will only illuminate when the ignition is on. You'll get a succession of green lights coming across the screen, indicating how full the tank is. So the fuel filler caps just behind the passenger door. It's not affected by the central locking. Ignition key in twist the key and the cap and that enables you to fill up with diesel. There's a hanging point on the door if you wish. You also have an AdBlue system on here. So there's a dashboard light will come on if AdBlue is required and it's just a matter of removing the cap and topping up if that's what's needed. When you come in, underneath the passenger floor, you have the access for your engine battery. Below the passenger seat, you have got your vehicle toolkit, and then on the side of the passenger seat, you've got your air ride settings as well. Bonnet releases at the end of the dashboard, pull back on the main lever, and that enables you to get to access to it. To open the bonnet, just pull the 
lever up on the inside, stalk up, and then over on the extreme left hand side you've got your screen wash additive. There's a funnel in the toolkit to extend for ease of use and then you have access points for your brake, uh, radiator and power steering fluids, oil filler cap and an oil dipstick as well. Because of the position of the engine battery, if you required or needed to jump start the vehicle, there's an access paddle which is released under this cap. Attach your positive onto that point. The negative goes onto this bolt located just here and you should be able to jump start the vehicle. So when you first open up the sliding door on the left hand side, you have got your awning. On this design, it's advised that you have the sliding door shut when you open the awning up. T up into the slot and turn your handle. Wind your awning out to a convenient reach point. The legs are sprung loaded, so push in on the foot, let the whole leg roll through, and then when you get into the right position, let the leg down, and then just push firmly back on these levers, and that locks that leg into position. It's the same for the other side, so push in, release your lever, and lock off and then continue winding the awning out and walking the legs out at the same time. Maximum extension on these is about two and a half meters and they are sunshades, not storm shelters. So wet or windy conditions, you do need to put them away. It's the reverse of bringing them in. So again, wind the awning into a convenient midpoint Fold your legs in on both sides and then spring load the foot back into position. Having stowed the leg safely, continue winding the awning all the way in. When you open up the sliding door, you have your electric step switch and it's just a single press for the step to draw in or be extended. It'll also retract on ignition. There are three additional light switches. If the central cabin lights are left on, you can isolate and switch those off from outside. And then the adjacent two switches turn on your awning light and some courtesy lights down on the floor. When you first come into the auto sleeper above the sliding door, you've got a 12 volt control panel. It has a number of features. It may have a dark screen, just touch any part of the screen and it should turn to this status. To actually turn the power on within the van, uh, press the top left hand button. Automatically you'll find your interior and your awning lights will come on, select um, and they should turn off. You've got a separate switch for your water pump, so use that on demand if required. And then indicators for your fresh water and also your battery level and solar indication, showing you what your consumption is um, and what the active power is that's coming into the van, either from the mains or from solar use. Press back on the home screen. And again, you'll get other symbols showing you uh, the levels that are available and the systems also. Typically you would use your leisure battery for your lifestyle, but you have the option of being able to switch between the battery settings and use the vehicle battery as an alternative or as an emergency source of power. So do that reluctantly and sparingly. Settings buttons take you through other options for setting up the heating systems uh, for the whale, um, as well as showing you which batteries you're able to use and accessing the tank heater built, uh, system uh, for cold weather use. You can set up timers and delays um, and dates and times 
on those functions as well. Press the home button and it brings you back to the central menu. So for setting up the whale water heater, you do need to make sure that the system has been primed. So there needs to be a sufficient level of water in your onboard fresh water tank. Make sure that the yellow valve on top of the water heater is closed. Turn the water pump on and draw some water through the hot tap, just to ensure that you have that continuity of supply. If there's any kind of aeration or spitting, wait a little bit longer for that supply to come through. Repeat the process with the shower and with the vanity unit to ensure that you've got sufficient water before you start heating. We've heated this one up earlier, so that's why you're seeing some of the steam rising now. With the whale heating and water heating controls, when you first turn on, you may well notice a little amber light on your frost setting. For the room heating systems, you simply press the three wavy lines, first of all, and then choose the output that you require and how that energy is gonna come from. So in this first symbol, you'll see a flame and two uh, wavy lines indicating you're using a combination of electric and gas. You go through, then you have some, a range of electric options subject to the mains amperage that's available for you to use. If you're wild camping, uh, just a gas operation. You go all the way through until there are no more symbols illuminated, that switches the system off. Thermostatically, you control it by using the yellow line across the screen. Uh, the higher it is towards the right-hand side, the warmer the van will become. Water heating is done in a similar fashion. Press the top left-hand button, and again, a choice of electric, gas, and a combination of electric and gas settings, depending on your requirements and your needs. It's a frost protection one. However, I would still drain the water down um, if you are not using the van through the winter months. And again, scroll all the way through until there are no more illuminated for the system to switch off. You've got a Thetford fridge on here, which has a three-way system as well as an automatic function. When you initially turn the fridge on, use the raised square on the left-hand side and then you have touchscreen functions for an automatic setting where it will read the conditions and use the appropriate source, or you can manually select mains, uh, vehicle battery for uh, driving or gas operation. Automatic ignition for the gas side. Thermostatically, you can adjust it using the second setting um, and increase the number of increments to chill the fridge. To turn it off, Press and hold in for a couple of seconds and the whole appliance should shut down. When you're using the microwave, it can only be operated on 240 volt mains. You will need to make sure that this switch is illuminated for the appliance to work. And this model is a plateless one. So you just have a flat pad inside. So with the hob, extend the lid up and use the igniter on the front to bring up your gas. These lids do not have thermostatic sensors on them, so make sure that the appliance is switched off and cooled before you fold the lid back down, otherwise they will explode. Below, you have your grill. If you turn it clockwise, you will have your grill setting. And if you turn it anti-clockwise, you will have the oven setting. Silver bowl toilet, move your bowl around to your desired position. Open up the seat. There's a lever on the side which you need to pull towards you in order for the main wastegate to open. Flush water supply comes directly from your onboard fresh water tank and goes around the inside of the bowl. Over on the back of the bowl, you have an indicator which will slowly turn to red as the cassette becomes full. Make sure before you draw the cassette back out that the lever is pushed back into the closed position for ease of use. The roof lights will have a similar operation. Push in on the tab, let the handle come down, and then you can sit it into various different runner positions for security close back over 
push up nice and firmly and make sure that the handle is back behind the stud and then fly screens and blinds from either side for use. With the back windows, none of the back windows are opening. You have blinds and fly screens on them for light filtering and then for nighttime use. So when we come into the cab, you have a multifunction steering wheel. Uh, attached to that is your steering wheel controls for your radio and for your phone settings, uh, operated through the central unit. We yet to set up the navigation mode on this one. So when you first accept, um, you'll get your radio stations, but when you choose the navigation, TomTom Tom will take you through um, a setting up process for that one. Media, you have the option of plugging in underneath the dashboard, um, other USB type connections, and then phone is operated through Bluetooth. Your settings button will take you into um, the settings, which will allow you to set up the date and time, not just on the head unit, but also up onto the dashboard as well. Ventilation controls, and you have the speed and temperature on the left hand dial, and then the input from either outside or recirculation, and then the directional controls centrally located when the center light is illuminated, the air conditioning is on. Just below that, your heated mirror function, central locking, and your um, ASR system if you wish to disable it, if you were perhaps driving on wet grass um, or icy conditions, um, it returns the throttle to wheel control and takes out the um, traction system. Storks, left-hand side, you've got your light and indicators on the top left-hand side, your cruise control and speed limiter on the lower left stalk, and then over on the right, your wiper controls back on that one for the screen wash. Behind on the dashboard, headlamp beam adjustment for the laden weight of the vehicle, rear single rear fog light, and this has auto stop start on it. So when you come to traffic lights, perhaps, um, if there's no requirement for the alternator to be functioning, then the engine will cut out um, when you come to a full stop. You can disable that if you wish to do so. Down on the left hand side, you have electric mirror adjustment for the top mirrors only. The blind spot mirrors need to be adjusted by hand and then your electric window functions and another central locking function as well. With the cab blinds, they have a cutout to allow for the wraparound on the rear view mirror and a magnetic strip on the inside to join the two together. Just make sure that they are stowed securely before travel. And it's a similar story with the door ones. Just be gentle with them and they attach magnetically um, to the front half of the frame. So that concludes the handover for your the Auto Sleep of Warwick. Sincerely hope this van's going to give you lots of miles and lots of smiles. But on behalf of Highland Camper Vans, thank you very much uh, for watching the video. And if you do need to get hold of us, just pick up the phone or drop us an email.